Is it really that important to believe that the Bible is 100% true, inspired and inerrant? It seems like there's a whole spectrum when it comes to Christians and what they believe concerning the Bible and its truthfulness. There's those on the one hand that believe the Bible is 100% true, the inspired and inerrant Word of God. And there are others on the complete other side of the spectrum that believe that the Bible is filled with a bunch of myths that maybe teach nice moral lessons. However, there isn't much basis in reality. And then there's another segment that's somewhere in between. So is it really all that important to believe that the stories of the Bible and the facts of the Bible are true? I think of a story like Ananias and Sapphira recorded in Acts chapter 5. It's a story of a couple who had pledged to sell a piece of property and donate the entire amount to the church. But when they got the money, they decided to keep some of it for themselves and they presented the rest to the church as if they were giving the full amount they got for the land. Well, the apostle Peter, it was revealed to him that they were telling a lie basically to God and to the church and so he confronted them. God ended up striking them dead as a result. Now, whether you believe that story actually occurred or if it's just a legend, I think the main point is about the same, that it's bad to lie, especially to lie to God, right? So again, is it really that important to believe that the stories of the Bible actually happen and that it's 100% true? Well, what about miracles? What about the virgin birth? What about even the resurrection of the dead? Is that important to believe? Now, the Apostle Paul writes this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then it also follows that those who fell asleep in Christ perished. If our hope in Christ applies only to this life, we are the most pitiful people of all. He makes the point that if Jesus didn't actually rise from the dead, if that story isn't actually factually true, then our faith is worthless. It's futile, he says. He says we're still in our sins. He says we have no hope after life on this earth, no hope of heaven or of anything after death. So we think about how critical it is to believe that the Bible is true and that even the amazing things of the Bible, even the miracles of the Bible, are true and accurate. They're the foundation of our faith. But you might have some that say, okay, okay, I believe that the virgin birth is true. I believe that the resurrection of the dead is true and Jesus rose from the dead. But do I really need to believe that God created the world from nothing in six days? After all, the scientists say that it was created over billions of years through a course of evolution. The scientists also, many believe there is no God. Many also believe that miracles can't possibly happen not just the creation of the world by God, but also the resurrection of the dead. And so who are you gonna trust? Are you gonna trust the scientists or are you gonna trust God and his word? Again, we see how important it is to trust God and to trust that miracles actually do happen and have happened as they're recorded in the Bible. But we don't believe the Bible simply because it's a necessity for our faith or simply because the Bible says that it is true we also believe the Bible because it's been proven to be true. There are countless prophecies in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament that have already come true. That we can say, see, this prophecy was fulfilled hundreds of years later. This book must be true and accurate and reliable. So the bottom line for us, is, is it important to believe the Bible is 100% true and inerrant? Of course it is. It's the foundation of our faith. And because we believe the Bible is true, we can be sure that Jesus rose from the dead. And that means that our sins have been forgiven. And we are for sure going to go to be with God forever in heaven through faith in Christ. Amen. Today's message is brought to you by Pastor Matthew Moldstead. We encourage you to share this gospel message with your family and friends. You can find this devotion and many more at peacedevotions.com.